So this is intended to be a very basic look at UV mapping in Wings 3D. And for this you'll need a subject. And this is my subject, which is going to be a box. And um, I'm not even going to include very simple things in the model, like these flaps. We're just going to ignore that. We're just dealing with it as a box and won't be beveling the edges uh, for reasons which we'll cover. And then we can look at that uh, in a later video so when uh, we get onto more complicated shapes. So this is the subject and it's just going to be a box and the things we need to know about this box is its dimensions. Well that's easy enough to determine. So I'm going to create a cube, select the entire object, right click and use absolute commands and scale and this will allow me to enter X, Y and Z for its scale. And in order to determine the size of this thing, well I'll just measure it. So if we say the height, we'll call that the Z direction, it looks like uh, 10.3 centimeters. So I'll, I'll do that in, ten, in centimeters. It's rather arbitrary in this case, uh, unless it comes to scaling it to match a figure, which uh, is another consideration. So uh, you can always scale it later on. We're interested in the UV mapping, remember? Right, uh, what have we got? Uh, we need the width. And I got rid of my box, didn't I? So I'll use absolute commands again and scale. So where were we? Width. Oh, the windows disappeared now. Here we go. Um, seven. So we'll say that seven there. So enter that. It's just a uh, confusion between which window is active. I won't go OK this time. And I'll try and find my uh, depth. There we go. Depth. So that's uh, 2.5. So go in here and enter 2.5. And then return. And so now I've got this in the same dimensions as my object. Hopefully just by measuring and entering those values. Now the next stage is to cut this up into a flat shape and handily the way things that are manufactured is they tend to be made from flat shapes anyway which is why I chose this box so if I have a look at this box and you can see here uh, one of the bottom flaps there's a bit of a seam and there's a flap under here where it's glued together so what I'm going to do uh, well rather than unpick that which was proving to be a bit fiddly is just take a pair of scissors to it and cut along the edge where the seam is and then unfold it so I've got this shape now what I intend to do is put cuts on the UV map so that when I unfold it it adopts this shape uh, without the tabs we're not worrying about the tabs now it'll be complicated enough as it is trust me uh, particularly if you're new to UV mapping so it's been a bit of a steep learning curve so I'll look at this shape and I can see the front it's cut across the top but there's a flap on the bottom and then these tabs will just cut across there and cut across there and on the bottom it's cut across the bottom and there's a cut there and on this right hand side there's a cut down this side so I need to figure that out for the model so here's our model and if I do right click with it all selected I can go to the UV mapping and I get another window and this is the window that allows me to break the UV map up so what's the top um, probably the Z direction so if this is the top and then I find my picture which I had a moment ago uh, okay picture so we're saying a cut along the top cut there cut there but we'll even a flap that's going from the bottom so we'll deal with that one first so select this line a cut along the top down there down there and the flaps connecting from the bottom back to the picture okay uh, the front is connected down here and so that's the reverse of that situation so there and then we can cut up here and cut up here so that's cutting those other tabs off so just confirm that with our shape so that's cut across there cut across there but connected on the front and then there's this seam up the side so this is this side here so that's that seam there right click and mark those edges for cutting if I press space you'll see you can do those edges individually you can build it up one at a time you don't have to select them all together when they're marked for cutting they're orange now I'll right click go continue and unfolding and you can see hopefully you can see that it has unfolded you see that's this top bit here that's that there into this shape uh, it's come out at an angle because wings is trying to optimize the use of the area here now I'm going to modify this image in PaintShop Pro just to make the most of the image so if I take this image into PaintShop Pro and I'm going to crop it and hopefully paint oh it has crashed it keeps doing that to me I don't know why let's try again thank you right 
try again. Crop. Okay, it's given it a bit this time. If anybody knows why PaintShop Pro keeps doing that, that would be helpful. So just try and make sure that I'm cropping it to maximize the use of the image, the information that I need. So I don't need any of my uh, kitchen worktop here, just this image. So I'll just uh, double click to crop that and then go File and uh, Save Copy As and call this Unfolded Cropped. Okay, and now go back to Wings and I can go File and there's uh, down here somewhere where was it import image how did I miss that okay click on import image navigate to your cropped image go open and then the important thing to do here is now to create the texture for this so go right click create texture I'm going to set it at 2048 by 2048 its default setting is much lower usually but it's remembered what I chose last time on the options for draw edges I want none and on the background options I'm going to choose this image which it has selected this time so go OK and go OK you can see now we've got the UV map overlapping the image and something's going off in the viewpoint over here uh, you can see right we can see we've got something happening UV mapping wise so this needs rotating to fit this image so we can uh, go to rotate and just I'll just rotate it round so it's in aligned with the image then right click and scale uh, and I can scale to max uniform which fits it sideways but the top needs scaling up and down so go scale and do max vertical you see now it's more or less aligned which is handy but there's a few points to shuffle around so if we select points on here you can move these points so they fit closer to the image and thus makes everything fit. Now they're all selected, but I just want individual points here. Okay. So just press space to deselect and then you can select them individually and just line them up carefully. You can zoom in and out with the with the mouse wheel in this case, which is handy. Uh, and for, for detailed you can select one and use the A key and it'll sort of put that in the middle of the screen and then you can zoom in. So just zoom out and select this one, press space to deselect, select that one there. So what you're doing is you're aiming to put these points so that the lines run down the appropriate part of the image. You can see, oops, I've got two selected there, which is a bit annoying. So go Control Z, press space, then select that one there, and then drag it into position. And you can see it's a little bit fiddly this, so you can imagine that it gets even more fiddly on more complex objects. Have I got two selected again? Yes, I have. Just and position, press space to deselect everything then pick these up, press space to deselect everything and then pick that up. There's another one over here, press space, press A to center, use the mouse wheel, press space, make sure I've only got one because I keep picking more than one up, drop that in there, press space, put that on that edge there. We're getting close now, it won't be long. I'll just move that across. You see that this is a little bit of compromise here because this is the way the cardboard is cut actually can't get that in quite the right position so that this will sort of go around the corner a bit so do we have some of the um, table showing or do we have you see what I could do is correct this image uh, later on in the paint package but this is getting fiddly as you can see press space it's like that corner press A to zoom in you can use the arrow keys to reposition the image if you can't get it to zoom in like it won't do sometimes for some reason. I don't really know why. Temperamentalness of software. So where we go. We go zoom out again. These all stayed in alignment. I think we're pretty close now. So if I uh, close that, we can zoom in on the model and just move it around and have a look how well aligned it is. It's not too bad. You can see there's a little bit of a chamfer there. This top edge fits pretty well. So this, the thing to do at this stage is go File, Export, Export uh, as OBJ. So call this my uh, box and save that as an OBJ format. And then we'll have a look at it, how it looks when you import it into different software. So we'll we'll start with Bryce and it shouldn't take very long to save. So go File and Import Object, find my box, open the box, go OK. Uh, drop it down and I'll move the camera around so you can get a quick look at how this is looking and point out some of the things that you might not be aware of. So here we go, give this quick render. Uh, it looks a bit odd, like a bit too dark on this corner and that's because it's as an OBJ it's been brought in smoothed 
but it wants to be unsmooth so if you just click on unsmooth it'll now be a flat box and be better lit like I say we've not chamfered the corners down and the reason for that is I said I would show you if we go to this select the entire object then go to edges right click and bevel weird things happen to the map when you've beveled it I've done it rather extreme there to show you but you can see that it's really distorted the map and if we go back to the UV map so just left click on UV map and it'll bring it back up you can see here that we've got very odd geometry being gem generated which is not good so go back you can bevel it slightly and sort of get away with it but otherwise you've got to do the uh, you've got to take the beveling into account when you do the UV mapping which means going back several stages and it does add some complications so that was the reason I avoided doing that so here we go back to in Bryce if we look in the material lab you can see we've got this as a picture image and square is optimal for this and this is the the alpha is empty in this case because there's no transparencies or any bump information on this keeping things simple see so octane we can we can load this in to octane so we go wave import object node load that in and find the right place to plug it into here and zoom back now with octane does tend to bring in all the material smooth much like Bryce so again you want to unsmooth that just so it's lit correctly if you're using octane you can see previews very quickly in octane which is nice and in Dust Studio, I have no idea what the smoothing situation is. Let's get rid of that figure, but I do know how to import it. So go to import, select your object, go import, accept whatever it says I'm going to. And here we've got it in Dust Studio. And uh, like I said, I don't know what the smoothing situation is, but it, it looks okay. So there you go. There is a quick study in doing a bit of UV mapping in Wings 3D. So I hope you found that helpful and interesting and that you'll have a go at doing this. Cheers now.